Rain finally ceases, but the wind picks up. You squint into the gusts and have a clear view of the fast planes ahead. There doesn't seem to be much out there, Weaver says. His tone conveys wonder and concern in equal measure. That looks like tents and stuff. The ground shakes again, enough to cause the yawks to strain their loins and panic. Out here in the plains, with nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around and no mountains, Akon says in a right tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the ground opening up beneath us. Shrugs at the look you give him. Gruntar almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us too. Maybe. In a field just outside of Grindar, a caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. But are those? Horseborn hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look indeed unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I have to get closer, a closer look. Uh, me too. Two of you advance a hundred yards, showing every sign of respect and peace. A number of clansmen push closer too. The male horseborn stomps a hoof repeatedly. The female tail whipping brandishes a javelin. Damn, the caravan is scaring them. Uh, I kind of want to do both, though, because we don't want the archers to have their bows up at all and we want everyone to move back but if we only get people to move back then the archers still have their bows and they still kind of yeah right, go tell the archers to put down their bows Oddleaf looks irritated at having to leave the horse barn but she does what you say you slowly advance and point I'm Rook What's wrong with your friends? The standing horseborn exchange a look, the female snorting and shaking her mane. You help? His voice sounds strained and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Yes, help. You wave to Avon to approach you slowly but confidently. The female looks agitated and speaks in a long stream of consonants. The male responds to her, then turns to you. Help, Rowek, and others. I'll try. This is certainly a first. Standing horseborn step aside, allowing Avon to approach the windied fires. With Avon and Juno attending to the windied, Roek and the other horseborn. The caravan settles down outside the scant town of Grindar. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Like I said, tents. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return looking disappointed. Cold us outside, us, the woman says. They don't want us interrupting their wheat harvesting festival, but the merchants don't seem to mind trading. Clansmen soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn, some in awe, others in disgust. Oh, screw the ones in disgust. Horseborn are awesome. So first off, let us check the market, because you know, uh, we can get lots of supplies here. I have lots of supplies though, in fairness. Right, what's the items? Plus three all talent ranks, one will per turn, one armor per turn, one break. That's fantastic, but it's a rank 10. Uh, attacks never deflated, plus 10%, 2 times strength damage. It's 
Por Drecky Burra. It's two drawing aggro, 5% dodge strength attacks. Nah, that doesn't seem to. Umber Root. A rare tuber found deep in caves which gives strength and dark visions when you draw. Plus two strength talent ranks, plus three strength attack. Mender's Fib. Three armor talent ranks, plus one strength talent ranks, plus one exe talent ranks. Not going to buy any of them. We'll get enough for 25 days worth of supplies. Part of me feels I could probably stock up more, but. Um, right, let's speak to our people first. Then we'll level people up, then we'll rest. Thank. Glance at Ubin, who snorts and smiles. Skathats, thanking you for helping his friend Roetch. Edrio's the other one, but she's not in a talking with Val and humans mood. You're welcome. I'd like you to meet Hakon. Skathats' tail swats his flanks. Bows his head towards Hakon. Varl man's same herd? No, but we're no longer enemies. I haven't seen Osborne in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Varl were at each other's throats. What happened to Roek? Roek, brave fighter. Protect food. Many times. Yeah, who was attacking? Gathach says many things in his other language. A trigicante. His eyes go wide and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was it the people here, here in Grundar? I guess that shows where Hakon's point. He shakes his head and points west again. Varl King eyes because that sh suspiciously. What brings you so far north? Because that looks confused by the question. So Ubun shows him the map, pointing to Talamond and Gundar. Food. Our planes break. Hakon snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses, Scrivener? His ancestors did, yes, but blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years before they were alive. May as well accuse these humans around us of starting the Great Wars. How do you know our language? Skathats just stares at you. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Hard little trade with mans in mud. I think he means our bog friends, the Cragsmen. You found the food you were seeking? Enough for time, I guess. Two others take to herd in south. So scuff the ground during certain words. Just those two? What about you and the couple? What the hags it was. Skatach, Ruedge, Dared you stay? This herd help. We help this herd. Thank you. He's got that nods in a movement that uses most of his upper body. An Val Horsborn. Same herd. Funny. Ben chuckles as the group separates. Huzzah! I've got me a Horsborn! Figured I was gonna get me a horseborn because of some of the images, you know, from like the main screen, but that's awesome. I like it. Fully they good. Regardless, I'll still use them. Prince is acting even more standoffish than usual. You and Eva have caught him staring ahead and twisting the ring on his finger over and over. Here's a quietly stands nearby. Glad to be heading home. Luden turns to the two of you and offers a polite smile. Even after that chasm, would it surprise you if I said no? With 
but you hate being so far from our brain. Life on the trail hasn't won me over. It's not all bad. It's even possible that I've learned a few things about leading people while out here. You, Eva, and Ursa are stunned to hear the prince talk this way. I've grown up in comfort and trained with scholars and fighters. I've never known anything else. Saying stuff like that won't make you any friends in this caravan. That's just it. Among these clansmen, I've seen the differences. I think I understand them a bit more. What do you plan to do with this understanding? If we make it to Arborang without being slaughtered by Dredge? Then we make it. I'll talk to the king about my ideas for sharing information. Advisors learning from craftsmen, craftsmen learning from advisors. You've never seen the prince as an but then his face falls. I just don't think the king will appreciate my knowledge. Ursa will agree. Your father's not what you call open minded. The king's a hard man. Has to be. But his son is his weakness. Can you tell me about King Meinolf? I suppose, but there's not much to him. He's king. He draws a hard line on nearly every topic. Talking to him is much like being told what to do. In fact, it's exactly that. Alette says... Said that about me at times. This isn't about being his son. You'll see. Kings usually have to make tough decisions and stick with them. Maybe someday you'll see why. I know. I just don't think he'll care for my ideas on treating with peasant coveners. Would you like to be called? Oh, people, Prince, even you. Perhaps you're right. Just keep an open mind about your father the way you'd like him to have worked towards your ideas. That's something I've never considered before. I'll think on it. Prince Luden and Ursa walk away. You feel Eva watching you. What? Do you believe half the nonsense you say? I think I sounded really wise just then. Sounded like you'd been practicing it for a while. That's fair. I'll work on it. Maybe you share a smile before moving on. Yeah, and I'll... Um... Ah, the words have escaped me. Oh well. Right, let us rest. And rest again. And rest again. And so let's do another rest, why not? And then we'll go back to the market. Oh yes. Uh, 25 days. Which leaves us with 61 renown. Upgrade people. And you never know might be able to upgrade or do more training. Right then. Oh, I've got three. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The duty bound trader dedicated to his herd. Skathach is more trusting of strangers than the majority of its kind. Most humans think of Horseborn as a myth. Skathach has interacted with the Gragsmen of the Southern Bogs often enough to temper his fear. Apparently already has 10 kills. Horseborn charges forward and tramples an enemy, then attacks from behind. The enemy suffers strength damage during the charge. Is subsequently struck for one strength per tile the Horseborn moved before the trample and is left concussed, suffering 20% on his next attack. Nice! Just the same. Nope, me okay. Horseborn delivers a devastating kick with his powerful horse's legs, damaging the target's armor, sending him flying across the battlefield and leaving him stunned when he lands. Any other unit unfortunate enough to be in the path of flying enemy suffers a violent hit. Well, so that sounds pretty good, especially that knockback that has got on it at later ranks. Uh, let's read what Roetch is. A fearless fighter, Roetch almost never backs down from a confrontation. The 
10 years of age, his pride, culture and a short average lifespan drive him toward boldness. It is the only way he will become the leader of his herd before he is too old. His mate, Deirdre, unfailingly supports and encourages him. And here is Deirdre, a horse-born cantref. Deirdre is more cautious and ready to attack than most, usually concerned with betrayal from anyone but her mate, Roich. Her family was ambushed and murdered by a previously friendly tribe, leaving her with lifelong mistrust. I, you can understand that. Poison tipped. Horseborn uses a javelin tipped with a deadly poison to make sure her enemy doesn't forget her after the initial sting of her attack passes. The ill target becomes unable to secure their own ground and is able to be moved through. Ah. Poisons like this are often used against high strength enemies to wear them down over time or on a large unit that is blocking past other areas of the board. Doses do not stack together but a second dose will serve to refresh the damage over time and keep the target afflicted. Flex minus one strength per round for three rounds. That is interesting. You know, while moving, each willpower the horseburn spends allows her to travel two tiles instead of one. That's very cool. And actually see what his passive ability was hit and run. Horseburn takes a normal movement, then can attack or take another action. Oh yeah, no, I did. So very interested in our horseborn friends. Can't level any of them up at the moment though. So, Rooks definitely getting upgraded. 15. Beam. Did we get anything? Nope. Nah, let's not bother with that. Dodge or lucky shot. I think I'll max it. And yeah, so that actually, let's go for the, put one into that. And confirm. To promote them again would cost us 17. Hmm. Um, so what is our item? It's from death and that is minus three armor. No, that's that, no, no, not interested in that. I need someone else to give that to. Uh, so I need someone else at five. Although I've got them, I suppose, so that's fine. Um, let's promote either. So um, let's clear the party. Um, so I'm gonna take back on. I'm gonna take Evar. She sounds rather good. And I'll skip take Skatach. Although Mogar was my tank. I thought Eva is still pretty good in that regard. So I think I need to upgrade Eva again. I bet the Warhawk uses his. He's not a Warhawk though! Yeah, 
as you just forge your head. And we shall take to his armor. Um, yeah, and I think I'll upgrade Odd as well. Slag and burn. Interesting. Oh. Let's go with a bird of prey. So that'll do us. Three sixty two fives and seven. Yep, that will certainly do. Wait until we actually get in a fight to give them items, because otherwise that's just asking for uh, us to lose them. Right then, uh, training tent. Ah, right, okay. Right, what can you show me? Bounty! Sensei is walking in the large tent. The right to keep up! You can handle yourself, but what about your other fighters? Says, Ever you wish to fall on an archer to trap somebody? You feel up to the challenge? I'm ready. Then we begin! Sven barks. Ram enemy and terrain of arrows. Okay. Turn back to there. Ah oh, no, that's that's not gonna work when we've got archers. Right there. So much damage, even though that's how I won Banner Saga one. That's a chunk more renown. I think we'll keep it though. Is there anything else that you have, fit, Sven? 
Never seen a mentor with as much power as this Eivind, says Finn. But after watching him a while, I bet I can show you how to really benefit from that lightning of his. And then... I need to do chain it or clean in a chain of three or more enemies. Yep. Okay. So what it does is it chains marks to all diagonal units. Currently, I ain't gonna get a chain anywhere there. They do have archers, so let's move him back to theirs in it. Why the hell not? friends. We now have three of them in the party. We've upgraded plenty of people. We're chunk back into the renown. 25 days worth of supplies. I think that'll do it for this episode. So, hope you've enjoyed it folks. If you did, a like would be fantastic. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Banner Saga videos are my Tuesday upload, but I do daily let's plays of various games, so check them out as well. For now though, take it easy, adios.